Cowboy fans, Cowboy Nation, and uh, football fans out there. This is Cowboy Legends for Life coming back at you again with another video. I'm hoping that you like the last one. And um, I also want to say this first, too, is that I want to thank all those who subscribe to my channel so far. And I want to also thank especially those who have uh, um, liked and as well who have appreciate what the contents I put out in my channel. And it's said that it was good. And I appreciate that... Um, that, that um, respect you give me. Um, I'm hoping to further the channel. I'm hoping to do more than I can. I'm hoping to learn to do more films, you know, but I have to upgrade a few things in order to do that. But right now, I'll stick to what I have and I'll make it work. But again, I want to thank you all for uh, liking my channel, subscribing, and um, and giving me praise. That, that really, that really. You know, I didn't think that I was good at all, but I'm, I'm not saying that I am good. I'm saying that uh, I didn't think that, that I would um, get praise from those who are even Giants, I'm Giants fans, those who are even uh, Eagles fans and Denver Broncos fans as well, whomever, as well as Cowboys fans. They've given me praise about my channel and the content I put out, and I appreciate that, and I'm, I'm going to continue. So, I want to talk about this past this past uh, first preseason week and all the games that I watched, including the Cowboys, of course. And um, and it got me reminiscing, intriguingly, reminiscing about 2016 and uh, actually about the draft of the seven quarterbacks that went before Dak Prescott. Yes, it's going to be about a little bit about quarterbacks. And because the reason why I'm doing that, because watching the Denver Broncos game, and of course, the uh, listening to uh, the Eagles fans and listening to watching the Eagles game as well with the Pittsburgh Steelers and all of that and all those drafts that done that came by this past season. Okay, it got me reminiscing about um, what happened about to to the seven quarterbacks that were picked before Dak Prescott and where they at now. And uh, I'm like, you know, wait a minute. I mean. And I, and I start to realize because I got a little bit angry when I, when, I, when I started reminiscing. I went back and found an article I read back in 2016 season with about the, the seventh pick before that, during the middle of the season. I'm reading it, and there's some events that took place in that, in that span of time before the season started that I wasn't fully aware of. And maybe I read, read it and not really paid attention to it because of the, the difference of seasons of 2016 and 17. Okay, that, that, that played a part in it. And it's interesting that general manager Jerry Jones not only wanted Paxton Lynch, who was a horrible quarterback, by the way. I mean, I talked about it the other day, and you got a number of people talking about it now. And uh, he is a horrible, horrible pick. And you're thinking about, wait a minute now, what is, what is the general manager of the uh, Denver Broncos doing now? One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, John Elway, can't seem to pick himself off the ground when it comes to picking a proper quarterback. I mean, he's had Trevor Simeon, who hard, who sucks. He had Brock Osweiler. Oh, <laughs> you know, and I, I think Brock Osweiler is worse than Paxton Lynch because Brock Osweiler has played far longer and more than Paxton Lynch, who just can't get himself out of the preseason. To even get a chance to play in the, in the regular season, he's that bad of a quarterback, though. Passing mentions because he's he's so bad in preseason that his, when he asked his they asked his coach about his uh, progressions, his progress. He goes, uh. <laughs> it's got to be real bad, man, for your coach to respond like that to the to the cameras and the, and the, and the, and the, and the um and the reporters. They go, uh. He's horrible. And I watched it for myself. I've seen it before, but I, well, what the hell did it, what the hell did Jerry Jones see in this guy? Who tried to, he tried to draft up for Pat Salins. What did he see in him? What did they say? And I know that it was just him. I don't care what y'all say. I know Stephen Jones is smarter than that man he is right now when it comes to general managership. Maybe not in business. Jerry Jones is a master at, but when it comes to per, player personnel and filming and picking, Jerry Jones need to be quiet, 
sit back and, and, and sip a mint julep or something like that on a rocket chair and just shut up. Don't say nothing to nobody. And when somebody asks you a question, say, I'm just the owner of the team. Now, that's what you need to learn how to say, Jerry. Because when it comes to picking quarterbacks and all the other stuff you do, you're the one of the worst of all time. So when I saw that he picked, he tried to get picked past the Lynch, we, we know about that now. That's his long history. That failed. Thank God. We dodged that bullet. <laughs> anyway, he went and got tried to get afterwards. He tried to get, um, I'm looking at this. He tried to get, um, uh, when Kellen Moore went down, he would try to get Nick Foles. Now, they tried to get Nick Foles. He, you know, this is when Kellen Moore went down. But before that, he tried to get all these players. He tried, then tried to get Connor Cook before when he failed with uh, Paxton Lynch. I'm looking at it again. Great. He tried to get Connor Cook, and he failed that. Couldn't get that because you know, the, the Raiders drafted up against him and got Connor Cook. Whew, another one went, a, a bullet went right past us. Connor Cook's horrible, too. Right? So when it was all over, they finally settled for Oh, let's just go get and get Dak Prescott. God, me, man. Ah, you know. <laughs> so we got Dak Prescott. And so when the season was rolling around and they were and you got the practices and stuff and OTAs, um, Colin Morgan's Kellen Morgan's hurt, broke his ankle. So he had to replace him. So Dak went from third string to second string, of course. So they were trying to replace. I don't think they put him in second string until they try to replace Connor Cook first. I'm sorry, Kellen Moore first, okay? And so they went and tried to get, like I said, Nick Foles. So that didn't work because Nick Foles went ahead and signed with uh, the Chiefs. Went back to uh, an old uh, Eagles coach, all right? So they went and tried to get Josh McGowan. Now, Josh McGowan is not a bad quarterback, you know, but he fits well in, the, in New York where he did, trying to train those new young boys they got now, all right? And so, um, but he does he wouldn't fit well in a cowboy system. He just wouldn't. I don't see it. All right. Maybe it's just me. But um, we didn't get that. So when he couldn't get Josh McGowan, um, they went and tried to get, um, uh, what's his name? I forgot. Uh, they had to settle it on into, and that, when they couldn't get Nick Foles and Josh McGowan, they had to settle on to give Dak Prescott the second, second straight. All right. Because Castle, he was gone. He 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 got hurt. So I think he was gone. And all that stuff. So all of a sudden, you had Tony Romo went and got his back broke. He got hurt once again. His annual hurt and it's got, it's got a report that he's going to get hurt before the season starts or during the season. Okay? So that happened. So Dak Prescott was forced into the first string role. Okay? Of course, there were, there were a lot of coaches that were high on him. But the point is I'm trying to make is that how hard Jerry Jones tried to fight the, to, to, to get a quarterback other than Dak Prescott. All right? Sometimes God just smiles on you. And even though you're not looking, she just keeps smiling. Okay? So what's more important here is that it's like falling into a 12-foot pit of money. Okay? Not knowing that it was there before. And so and that's what happened when he, when he got that press guy in this situation happened. And I'm like, you know, but what do you get now? Because you're looking at the first to seven before Dak Prescott was Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, Paxton Lynch, Christian Hackenberg. Very interesting here because why? Because he just got picked up by the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Um, now that means that they're going to keep Teddy Bridgewater in um, New York. They're going to keep him, I think, now. So they got rid of Christian Hackenberg, who sucked, by the way, as well. With, along with the young other guy that was picked by the Jets, a first stringer, a year before that. He was horrible. I don't think he's on that team either. And, of course, Josh McGowan kind of saved him a little bit, saved the, the head coach's job because he played pretty well for the Jets. I forgot the name of the guy that started for the, quarter, uh, for the Jets a year before. He was, I want money. I did good. Give me my money before I, before I leave. They got rid of him. I forgot his name right now, but uh, that was crazy. And then from Christian Hackenberg, who was horrible, Jacoby Brissett. Now he he played. He won a couple of games with the Eagles. I mean, with the uh, with the uh, New England Patriots. But I don't think he's ready because they had uh, they had uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. He's gone. 
And uh, I don't think Jacoby Brissett may be the, the, their, um, their replacement for the great Tom Brady. That's not going to happen. Then number six was Cody Kessler. <laughs> Watch Cody Kessler with Kaiser and the rest of them. They're throwing the ball all over the place except to the end zone. So <laughs> Cody Kessler was horrible, you know. And uh, that's, that was a Browns, another Browns mistake in terms of quarterbacking. They may have, they may have just, may have just right in the ship down. Now that you saw, um, uh, they got uh, Mayfield and they got uh, uh, the guy from uh, the, the Buffalo uh, Bills, Ty Tyrod Taylor. They're both pretty good. They seem pretty good to me. All right, and I think Mayfield's going to be a beast. I think Mayfield's going to be wow. That's what I think. I say anyway. So. Now they went and tried to get Connor Cook. Like I said, he was seven. Then Dak Prescott. People, why is it that they? Why is this culture happening? The fact that this high hate Dak Prescott has become a culture. It is just this this crap because it's based on false narratives. It's based on false stats that Dak Prescott can't throw a ball ten yards down the field. You even heard. Freaking uh, television uh, commentator saying that. Are you in starting insane? You don't get to be number two and number four um, QBR uh, rated and, and lead the league and, and um, tight one of the throws at 45% if you can't throw a ball downfield 10 yards? Are you insane? I heard one jackass who was, who was off of uh, a Koye's uh, um, um, channel and I got into a beef with this particular person um, on that channel, saying that Dak Prescott has no pocket awareness, man. He's susceptible to fumbles all the time. And yet he has far less fumbles than Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, Paxton Lynch, all of them. All of them. He did better his second year of, of less fumbles than Paxton, I mean, Carson Wentz did. So who's susceptible to fumbles? Who has pocket awareness? I'll tell you what. The person who's got 12 rushing touchdowns, that would be Dak Prescott. <laughs> what else did they say he couldn't do? Well, just somebody name it for me. So then we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a reason why you're, you're, you're wrong. Okay? So other than that, I'm, just, I'm shocked. Okay? That the, 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 I hate Dak Prescott has become a culture. A lying culture. That's why I'm making this video. Because... He's going to be breaking a lot of hearts of these haters out here this season. I'm guaranteeing it to you right now. Because I said before, I, I, before I leave, this is because the video is long enough. I said before, okay, during this 2016 season, that with the class, everybody, kept, everybody was calling him a bum during the preseason in 2016. Dak Prescott was a bum, okay? And so that was Eagle fans mostly who were doing that, okay, at the time, all right? And I said to them that, Dak Prescott will win the Super Bowl before the class he was drafted with in terms of quarterback. And that I still holds true. Because remember, Foles won the Super Bowl because a lot of you Eagles fans want to play like th that, that Carson Wentz won the Super Bowl and all the postseason there. He didn't play in any of it. Okay? And in fact, if it wasn't for Foles, he wouldn't have won that game against the, the Rams in the regular season that the, the, the clinched the other division that day. Okay? So... <laughs> I'm telling you now, it still holds true that I believe right now that Dak Prescott will win a Super Bowl or at least get to a Super Bowl on his own in terms of uh, the, as, as the role that plays in the quarterback before any of these guys. That has happened so far. All right? So keep hating. I like to see what I see. I want you to keep hating as hard as you can. You're only making it easier for Dak Prescott. That's the truth.